What is going on everyone? In today's tutorial we're going to be working on Adobe Photoshop creating a website just strictly designed top to bottom from scratch uh, and we are going to be using a grid system that will allow us to create this website so in your documents uh, I should be providing you with all these files that you see in this folder right here and inside the 960 grid system we're going to double click in there and then head over to where it says templates and we're going to head into Photoshop and there's some for Illustrator and InDesign and so on and so forth. We're going to be working with Photoshop for this. Double click on Photoshop and we're going to be working with the Nine sixty grid uh, twelve column. Just go ahead and double click on that one, and it should open up here in Photoshop. And the first thing that we're going to do once we're in Photoshop is we're going to be switching our our template size. So as of right now, we have it set to this kind of like box, and we're going to head over to image canvas size because canvas is our white rectangle you see here. Under canvas size, we're going to go ahead and switch this out let me put this somewhere where y'all can see make sure you switch it from inches or centimeters wherever y'all are at make sure you switch it to pixels when we work with websites we're always working with pixels so keep that in mind so make sure you set that to pixels we're going to be going to 1400 in width and we're going to go ahead and switch over to 2500 in height and just click ok once you zoom out right here you should see that it's gotten way bigger. We can now press the little eyeball right here to hide this pink. We don't necessarily need it. And we're going to start adding uh, some more gridded lines. Uh, these lines are going to be coming in horizontally, just like so. And now if you don't see your ruler right here, you can go ahead and press Control R on your keyboard. And that brings up the rulers. Uh, make sure your mouse is on the ruler currently up here when you click and then you can drag down okay so after checking the rulers uh, a little bit I went ahead and just added them and then you guys can kind of just place them as you see mine so take a moment to kind of adjust them but at one we have it right in between 0 and 2 which should be right at 1 inch then we have it between 2 and 4 which should be at 3 inches then we have the other one right here at 12 inches by the way if uh, if it so happens that you can't, uh, that you put it in the wrong spot or something like that, you can always just make sure you have the selection tool selected and then grab them and just put them in the correct spot. So right at 12. And then this one should be right around, I'll say right here at 23. And then this one right at, right at 30. I mean, sorry, uh, 29. So 29, 23, 12, and then 3, and then 1. Just like that. The next thing we're going to want to do is go ahead and add a gradient to this. But we're going to add a gradient in a specific way. So we're going to head down here to our create a new fill or adjustment layer. Go ahead and click on it. And then in here you will see gradient. Let me drag this over to this side. And in this one we're going to just go ahead and click inside here there it is sorry it's because I have I have two monitors and sometimes these things will pop open in my other monitor okay so from here we're gonna go ahead and select uh, our color picker right here so right here at the bottom we're gonna just go ahead and select a almost a, a dark kind of reddish kind of color something around this lines you can just type in the number if you want. I'll go ahead and type it right here. 837A7B. Something like that. Eh, close enough, you know. It doesn't have to be the exact color, but give or take, right? Um, and then we're going to go ahead and press OK. We're also going to select um, this color right here. 
I'll just go ahead and go over to kind of like a grayish color DDD and then just double click this one right here make sure that opacity is set to 100 there we go then we're going to select instead of linear oh press ok sorry instead of linear we're gonna go over to radio and you notice how we have the black in the inside we want to go ahead and reverse that so that it's on the outside oops 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 don't want to move those lines give me a second there we go I accidentally moved those lines didn't want to do that all right so there we go make sure you don't move the lines if you accidentally move a line you can go to uh believe it's view and then lock your guides that way you can't select them and move them around uh but yes i just want to move this gradient up here towards the top give or take somewhere like that that looks pretty good to me and then just kind of press ok now if you want to you want to see how it looks without the guides you can always go to uh, view and then under guides where are they at show right here you have guides shortcut control colon uh, colon marks so if you had control and colon it erases them but it doesn't erase them it just kind of hides them right and you put it and then it comes back over and over again so control and colons just like that and so we're going to go ahead and continue here and now what we're going to be doing is just going to add um, this layer to be its independent layer so instead of a, a fill right here we want it to be an actual layer that you can work with and to do that we're going to go ahead and select it press ctrl alt shift and e so four keys at the same time ctrl alt shift and e and that makes it turn into its own little layer right here which is what we want and then from there we're going to go ahead and apply a filter to it to kind of give it some kind of texture so from here we're going to go ahead and head over to filter filter gallery and then under artistic we're going to go to uh, film grain you notice this little texture that it's adding so we're going to go ahead and switch this up to maybe like a four here four here and maybe an intensity instead of 10 we're going to drop that down to about one something like that looks kind of cool and then just press ok and now we have that little cool texture now what we want to do is go ahead and add a shape when you select shape down here we're going to add a rectangle we're going to make sure that our shape says shape right here up at the top our fill we're going to set that to a gray something like this will work for now uh, make sure stroke has nothing so this doesn't matter as long as there's no stroke yeah leave it at nothing right there and then make sure everything else is the same as mine and then we're just going to go ahead and drag our rectangle from the number three down to our number 29 so let's go ahead and drag from up here down to 39 just like so perfect just like that and I'm just gonna go ahead and zoom in here to double check and make sure that it is perfect so you want to make sure that it's corner to corner and corner to corner by the way the way I'm doing this is uh, when you zoom in control plus and control minus when you zoom in you can hold space bar and you'll get this little hand and you can kind of like click and drag around so you can move it around and stuff so that's how I'm doing that control minus control plus So the next thing we're going to want to do is go ahead and change the color of this rectangle. So right here where you see rectangle and you see this like shape that's gray, we're going to double click that and that brings up our color palette. And so we're just going to go to C1, C1, C1. 
just kind of this like light gray color that we're going for here. Then just click OK. Now what we're going to want to do is go ahead and add an outer glow. Uh, and the way we're going to do that is if you right click right here, you can go to blending options. And from our blending options, we're going to go ahead and go to outer glow. And on outer glow, we're going to go ahead and choose black. Make sure this is set to screen. Uh, this can be anywhere like 75 ish. We'll probably mess around with that a little bit. I'm going to switch this actually over to multiply. Put this over at like, mm, give or take like 34 pixels. Mm. Let's see how that looks like. Do around 60 pixels right here. And then, yeah, so 60, 34, then just click OK. And so we're kind of getting something here. Uh, it's starting to come together somewhat. And uh, we're going to go ahead and add a new layer, just a blank layer on top. So down here next to the trash can, you see an empty layer, just like that. And then we're going to go ahead and add a circle. So instead of a rectangle, we're going to select this circle tool. And we're going to go ahead and zoom in down here. Whoa, that's not what I wanted to do. That's actually quite interesting what I just managed to do there. <laughs> All right, go ahead and zoom in right here. We want the circle to start right here in the center. So by holding Alt, it will create a circle. And you can hold Shift. And you want it touching both edges just like so. So there we go. We have a shape. Perfect. Uh, so again, let me just go over that one more time. If you click somewhere and you do this, it kind of spreads it out to the side. If you hold Alt, it starts it from the center. And so what you want to do is start it from the center and hold Shift so that it keeps it all proportional. And you can make a circle. So control Z because we don't need that one. And then from there, now that we have that circle, we're actually going to um, highlight it. And I'll show you right now. And we're going to do this. So hold control and click inside here. So that gives you a selection and then hide it so we don't see it. We're going to come over here to our rectangle tool and we're going to press uh, to create a layer mask. So layer mask will essentially turn everything black, which hides everything, and then leave the little circle white, which will only show that. But we want to do the invert. So we're actually going to press Control I and invert it outwards. There we go, just like so. And this will inverse our mask. Perfect. So now, if you want, we can go ahead and take a look to see how everything is starting to look like. And let's see real quick. So let's go ahead and zoom out. And we're going to press control colon. There we go. So that's what we currently have. Uh, let me double check. Oh, yeah. Perfect. So, so far, so good. We have something that's coming together. And let's go ahead and continue. So what we're going to do is select our rectangle and press control J. That's going to give us an exact copy. We're actually going to select the mask, right click and put delete. Then we're going to go ahead and uh, double click inside here to change the color. And we're going to go for a color that's a little bit darker. So it's going to be 2B, 2A, 30. And then from there, make sure that you have your, your rulers back up. We're going to press Control T so that we can resize it. And then just drag up until it matches right here to this one. Press Enter to OK it. And then we can right click and put clear layer styles. That's going to get rid of the glow effect and stuff like that. So if we look at what we have now, this is currently what we have going on. So not bad, hey? Pretty good so far. From here, let's see. Bring back our, our rulers just so we can see. And then what we're going to be doing next is making sure that we save our particular file because we haven't saved yet. So I'm going to go ahead and go to File, Save As. Go to Website number one. I have my 
working files. And then just name this one website one. And make sure it's a Photoshop file. Click save. Click OK. Cool. So from here, what we're going to be doing next is going to grab this little white, this little circle we had here. This one, right? And then um, just right click, make it white. OK, cool. Give it the exact same size and bring it up here. Make sure it like latches onto the center, right? And again, we're going to do the same thing we did earlier to this particular one. So we're going to go ahead and select Control and make sure it's highlighted. Then we're going to hide the circle, click Rectangle, create Layer Mask. And then press Control I to invert it. And now we have this like pretty cool thing going on here. And if I were to do this, we now have this cool little effect. So pretty cool, pretty cool so far. All right. So the next step that we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and put this up a little bit. We're going to select the layer with the gradient right here, and we're going to go down here and click Gradient Fill. So let me go ahead and show you which colors we're doing here. So we're going to go ahead and click in this one and then just click on this first one and then we're going to go ahead and type 2B to A30. Click OK. Then double click on this side and we're going to type E6 DF D9. Then click OK. Then we're going to drag this guy just a little bit in this direction and then bring this guy a little bit back over here. It's the numbers don't quite matter as long as they kind of look like that. And then we're just going to press OK and press OK. And we're going to switch this over to multiply. Just like so. Maybe drop this down to around 95. Press OK. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and select the actual layer mask, which is all white currently. We're going to grab our rectangle marquees tool. Make sure we have our our rulers up and we're going to start from the very corner and then just kind of drag down. We don't want to come all the way here. We want to end it eh, somewhere around. Let's say 26, give or take. Maybe in between two, like 27. Actually, sounds better. And then all we're going to do is go ahead and just Color all that in with black. Make sure you're using a brush and make sure it's black. Make sure you're at 100 and 100. It should look like this. And then you can just select the selection tool, press Control D, and you will get rid of that selection that you had there. So now what we want to do after we've done all this, make sure we save one more time. And this is where we start importing the very first picture. So we can go to File. Place embedded, and we're going to import our notebook and press place. Make sure we hold Alt and we just kind of drag out towards the edges. Make sure it's like touching the edges. Press enter. We can go ahead and move the notebook all the way to the top, and we're going to put the notebook all the way up here and maybe maybe make it a little bit bigger just like so yeah that's pretty good just like so and then we're gonna drag it underneath this gradient right here that we have like that okay so the next step we're gonna be doing is heading over here to one of our rectangles we're gonna go ahead and press control and click on our rectangle right here like you see so it should make a selection around it and then with notebook selected we're going to go ahead and press to create a layer mask and then that's going to hide it pretty much so selecting our layer mask we're going to press Control i that inverts it right then we're going to make a copy Control j and bring that over to the top and then again Control i and then that will invert it again. So we kind of have, if I hide this one, we only have it in here. 
And if I had this one, we only have it outside. And so one's on top and one's behind it. Oh, well, we still have this little effect going on. So, so far, so far, pretty good. I like the way this is looking and turning out. We're going to go ahead and bring this back up. Oops, sorry about that. Let me move this a little bit farther away from me. Then we're going to go ahead and grab our gradient tool. When we're going to do the gradient here, guys, it's important that we select the clipping mask right here and we hold control. This makes a selection around it. And then you can start slightly above and then just drag up. That'll create the effect that we have going on here. And it won't mess up with our current selection. So once we have that, we select the, the picture and we go over to the adjustment layers and we're going to add curves. So with curves, we just want to click this button right here that will make the curves only apply to the layer underneath it. And the reason why is because we're going to mess with this a little bit. So we can kind of make it uh, ever so slightly like different than the one that's underneath because we're going to mess with that one a little bit right now. Then we're going to head over and do the same thing. Brightness and contracts. Do that. Bring it in a little bit. Just like so. Okay, that looks pretty good. So before and after. Subtle little thingies that we, we changed here. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and mess with the one underneath. So now we're going to go ahead and head to this bottom one down here, which is this one. Instead of normal, we're going to hit multiply. And that's kind of giving it a different look and style here. We're going to go back to curves and maybe uh, change that up a little bit. Yeah, something like that. Kind of give it like this almost faded look. Not too much. Under brightness, maybe. Not so much contrast. There we go. That looks kind of cool. So just to give it a little different vibe. It's it can be all different according to yours and stuff. But okay. So after that, what we're gonna do is just kind of lower the opacity of this bottom one. So we're gonna select it. And then just drop the opacity a little bit. Maybe to like around 80, 85, 80, between 80, 85, uh, and 70, 80, pretty good. And now we're going to group all this together. We're going to head up, grab our little circle included, go all the way down to gradient fill right here. And we're going to press control G. And that allows us to make a group out of it. And we're going to name this background. So double click in it and then just title it background. And we're going to go ahead and save this. And that is it for the first part of website designing in Adobe Photoshop. If you guys have any questions with this, just go ahead and let me know. And we will continue again in part two of website designing in Photoshop. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace.